Hi viewers, I am so super excited sharing this with you. Beringa Wing has just released four plugins, four processors, DSP processors actually to banks of what they had before. And currently it seems they are favoring the PA system, last picker system alignment and tuning. So it means for those that have this mixer, you can actually have this, have this and integrate these processors to tune your last speakers to align them. No matter how simple or complex your PA system is, you can actually use this to shaping your sound, balance your speaker responses, and shaping your acoustic response of your room. So I'm going to show you a few of those processors. The first one here is uh, speaker manager. Yes, speaker management manager is a, a a replica of an analog crossover. How many of you all have ever used a crossover before? Uh, you know that's what uh, was invoked before the advent of digital uh, speaker manager. Most people call it a last speaker management system. So now we have a processor known as speaker manager so let's let's uh, exploit and see what it it is so i actually want to insert this processor on my left and right but so that you will we can we can trick the parameters together so the first thing first is um select my left and right yes my left and right which is sending signal to the front of house yeah and then on the screen here is an FX insert. So once you click it, go to your bank of processors and then there you are. And this is the speaker manager. So I'm going to play a reference music so that we'll see how we can roll off low frequencies from our top speakers. And also let's see how we can roll off our high frequencies from the subwoofers. And if your system is three ways, let's also hear our band pass, meaning if you roll off the low end and roll off the high end, let's see how the sound, sound is uh, going to be. So first thing first is to play a music. And uh, the reference music I'm playing here is one of the spontaneous worship from T.Y. Bill and friends. All right, now we have filter type and obviously, if you don't know this, you should spend more time to do research on this. Now, that this is actually what it is. Low cut, high pass actually, and also low cut. So there's a frequency knob here that will establish what you are rolling off from your top speakers actually. So it means you can roll off all the way from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. There are, there, are, there are new amazing features here, which I have not seen it before. It is called Tilt EQ. Beyond the high pass, you can decide to tilt your high end. If you want so much excitement, if you want to excite your sound to be brighter, you can do this. Rather than engaging a parametric EQ, you can actually do this. And if your speaker already is too bright, you can roll it off. And as you are tilting it, the low mid is going to be affected also. You are going to increase your low mid, but let's just keep this guy flat. So there are other things like fix, precision delay, and de position and uh, delay. Okay, let's, let's go to the high cut and almost do the same thing we are doing here. Okay, now this is a low pass. So somehow if you are having a three-way system, this becomes your 
mid frequencies which is good for your voice coil when you roll off the lows from your subwoofers and you roll off the high from your woofer you tend to get clean crisp sound with less of distortion all right in this same speaker manager we are also using we're also having a limiter and dynamic eq yes this is this is the age of dynamic eq you know uh gradually we are facing up most of the analogous way of doing things you can actually choose to dial in some filters and allow system to take decision when a particular threshold is reached so now let's go to limiter but let me just flatten these eqs again so that we operate at uh full range okay let me maintain the flat and also the high cut flatten it that's one thing I'm noticing about this uh, uh, processor. So you're calling to your there's, there's, for, there's a kind of docking. It's, it's a bit. I guess they did this one just to protect the speaker from instantaneous uh, break breakdown from possibly catastrophic or loud too much loud transient sound. So the docking actually help to protect your loudspeaker so that if you are navigating from high pass to low pass band pass is this docking i think that's just what i i saw now if you want to engage limiter you can just on the same speaker management the manager there's a limiter that enables you to to apply your threshold oh let me activate it first okay i think this is it now i have this philosophy actually whenever you are dialing a compressor and limiter we should not hear the effect but let, let us feel the effect of compressor and limiter as you can see uh the effect is actually glaring that something is compressing why because the release time is actually 151 milliseconds so let's attempt to increase our release time and hear the sound i think this is cool this is soft but then i i have exaggerated the limiter so much so let me release it a bit all right so dynamic eq is more like multi-compressor that has element of parametric eq with some form of limiter imagine you merging three different no yeah three to four different form of processing in one single unit there's a crossover that enables you to se to select your uh, center frequency and there are parametric eq that enables you to dial in specific eq that needed compression and also we have banks of compressor together. So when you consolidate all these things together, it gives you dynamic EQ. So in my own definition, this dynamic EQ is equal to parametric EQ plus compressor plus crossover plus filter. So and when you know how to use all these said component processors very well, you will achieve better sound. Now, this dynamic EQ has, I think it's just one band that enables you to, to specifically look at any frequency that is harsh, that you want to, you don't want to manually insert your parametric EQ and bring it down, but you want to automatically program the system such that once that threshold is reached, the, the processor will take that decision for you. So now, what we'll do is let's uh, engage it and, and see what I can do. Okay, this is um, this is it. This I think this is just like a band band processor, single band dynamic processor. So can you see? Now, for you to really get this very well, it means you have to use your spectrum analyzer 
on each of your loudspeaker elements, loudspeaker components, and then decide which one has excessive frequency. So I think this dynamic EQ will fix it. So I think we can go on and on on this picker manager. It's, it's a book on its own. You cannot fully um, exhaust or comprehend these things. But gradually, with your understanding of processors, you will know how to use these things. All right. The next uh, processor added here is uh, Sub Monster. I guess this is very good. This is very good in your subwoofers. Let me roll off the mix so that we can hear what is going into our subwoofer. In case you are hearing this with your earpiece and it doesn't have this response, you might not be able to hear this frequency because it's super subharmonic in nature. And so that's it. So other parameters enables you to blend the effect of this in parallel to the stereo mix also. All right. Uh, what more? What more? Okay, the next stuff here is three band dynamic EQ. They call it triplet, triple, triple D EQ. And this is actually three dynamic EQ. This is actually three dynamic EQ. So it means you can engage three different frequencies and then apply threshold to take auto decision, autopilot for you. So I, I guess this is it. So you can select different form of filters type to effect. So you can and then center frequency to know which frequency is going to take effect from the switch center frequency. Assuming this sun is too bright or it's not bright and you want to um, increase, you can do this and engage the treasure. Then conversely, if the sun is too bright and you needed to to apply this frequency, just change this from the below to above, and then, yeah, and then you down in your limiters. So this will be taking decision for you whenever a particular threshold is switched in the high frequency. So you can engage two different filters. And you can have, assuming you don't have much of mid frequency, you can shoot through your frequency. Let's assume this is not having any body. You can, you can do this actually. And then. So, the blue shape you are seeing, seeing is the parametric EQ that is incorporated inside the dynamic equalizer. Then the orange color represents the processing of your compressor. So this is actually a combination of compressor and I think expander. This is doing the work of expanding your signal, expanding your signal, and this is compressing your signal. So you see, the dynamic equalizer here is actually too good. Okay. And everything is in this recent release. All right, the next thing here is Velvet Imager. This is good for mix and mastering engineering. As you can see, three different type of meter. Previously, I stated that we can, we can view audio with our ears. You know, the, the more your eyes are reading this meter, somehow it gives you an interpretation of how the sound will be in your perception, in your auditory perception, actually. So there are three kinds of meter here. We have the peak program meter that displays input, output, and what the mid side gain is doing. And we also have a correlation meter that shows if you are in phase or you are 
off face, out of face actually. So, assuming you excessively dry dial in your stereo image, you see, there's some form of cancellation. Let me see. A, more, a lot of cancellation are occurs as you see the correlation meter telling you. So in case your ears suffer from fatigue and you're in an event that has run for some hours, correlation meters can actually help you to know if you are transmitting an out of phase audio signal or in phase signal actually. So now let me return this one back and then the Enable our stereos in 50%. All right. The next form of meter is E major. It shows you spectrum of sound. When I say sound, I'm referring to one thousands of frequencies, thousands of activities that happens in this mix. And as you know, sound is all about the relationship between frequency level gain phase and other amplitude related uh, uh, issue, uh, related related component of sound so as you can see there's much of a stereo imaging this what we are sending out right now is a is a stereo image content now let me deliberately convert everything here to mono signal and have a look at uh, your imager let's see how it is now, I want to convert this one okay. Let's see, this is what you can see. I hope the cameraman is showing. All right, this is what you are seeing right now. You discover that your input is showing some element of stereo imaging. But you see, your output is just replicating the same thing on left and right. And so when you plug your headphone, both your left and right is sounding together as one. So there's no space, no definition, no aura perception of our stereo signal so again this meter image will show you your image status so let me return it back to how it was before all right i think these are just the three different type of meters i guess this image is very good for mastering and you can also use it for your broadcast audio if you discover that your broadcast audio signal is not having the, 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 a specific shape space it's required you can insert this 